Welcome! In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a movie clip button, that is, a movie clip symbol that acts as a button symbol, along with rollover effects and navigating to web pages via ActionScript. This is an ActionScript 3.0 tutorial, available exclusively with Adobe Flash CS3. If you don't have Adobe Flash CS3, head on over to Adobe's website, click on Downloads, and look for Adobe Flash CS3. All ActionScript will be explained, so don't stress yourself out. All right, let's get started. So, right now we're going to create an oval using the oval tool. And we're just going to fix a few things here. We're going to change the fill color to an aqua blue because it's a lot easier to work with. And we're going to align this to the vertical and horizontal center. All right, so we're basically done with our movie clip symbol for now, so we're going to convert it to a symbol, and we should just call it movie clip button, and this is a movie clip symbol. All right, so now it appears in our library. So layer one, we're going to rename button. Layer two, we're going to call actions, but we'll get to that in just a moment here. So now select your movie clip button symbol and give it an instance name of BTN. And an instance name, just if you're not familiar with that term, just means it's a name to refer to your symbol or object in ActionScript. That way you don't have to do all the actions on the symbols. Alright, double click into your movie clip symbol and create three new layers. Layer 1 called base, layer 2 called text, layer 3 called labels, and layer 4, call actions. So we're going to start with the labels here. We're going to insert a keyframe on frame 2, another keyframe on frame 10, another keyframe on frame 11, and one last one on frame 19. And we're going to repeat this format for the base layer. So, again, keyframe frame 2, another one 10, 11, and 19. All right. Now, on the text layer timeline, select frame 19, right click, click insert frame. All right, now on the actions layer here, we're just going to insert a blank keyframe on frame 10 and another blank keyframe on frame 19. Okay, now we're pretty much done our setup. So we're going to highlight this first set of keyframes here in the labels, so frames 2 to 10, and we're going to call over. We're going to select the next set of keyframes and we're going to call this out. Alright, so now you'll see in the timeline over and out. Now, almost done. We're going to create a motion tween in the base layer, two of them, and just on the keyframe, click on the keyframe, click on the movie clip, and select tint. And I actually already have my tint color picked out. It's this one right here, bottom left. Oops, guess I'll have to do it again. All right, now select frame 11's keyframe, click on the movie clip, and click tint again. So um, just so you know, the over label is roll over. So when the cursor rolls over the button, it's going to tween, and it's going to change to this purple-pink color. So when we roll out of the button, we want it to go from purplish pink back to aqua blue. Okay, now we're going to add our text, and I'm just going to call it button. You can type whatever you want into there, but that's just what I'm going to type. So button, I'm just going to try and align this to the center. Mm, that's about good. Okay, now we're going to open up the actions layer and we're just going to type in a simple stop action on each keyframe that we have. Oops. Stop. Oh, God. Typing really sucks today. Alright. So, now we're done with our movie clip. So we're going to exit back out to scene one. And we're going to open up the actions panel in the main timeline. Now, 
As I said at the beginning, we're going to be dealing with web pages too. So when we click on the little movie clip button, it's going to take us to a web page. Well, we're going to store that web page data, the URL, in a variable. So I'm going to introduce a new variable by saying var, and I'm going to call this YouTube. And it's a URL request equals new URL request. And in brackets and quotations, just type in the URL. So http colon slash slash www.youtube.ca. Okay, so this basic script here just means we're introducing a new variable YouTube and we're requesting a URL. We have to say this here, it's a new URL request, or else we'll get an error in our script. And we just gave the site address. Now we're going to continue on as normal, and we're going to say btn dot add event listener. I'll explain what this means in a minute. Mouse event dot roll over. Call this function btn over. So what this script here means, it just means btn, our instance name, referring to our button over here, is listening for the mouse to roll over it, and it will execute the function btn over, which we will define in just a minute. Now we're going to have actually three event listeners for this. The second one being our rollout state. So btn dot add event listener mouse event dot roll out. I'm going to call this function btn out. And the next one, last one, btn add event listener oops, mouse event dot click. And now we're going to go to the website. Now we're just going to say VTN click. Alright, so the script is the same as line 3 here. So this means BTN is listening for the mouse to roll out of it, and it's going to perform the function BTN out. And BTN is also listening for a mouse click, so it's listening for three things in total. And it will perform the function BTN click, which is when we're going to go to youtube.ca. Now time to define these functions. So function btn over. You have to type this little chunk of text into here. Event mouse event. And it's void because it's not going to send any data. Now we're just going to say btn dot go to and play. And then here's where our frame labels come into play. So in brackets and quotations, just type in over. Now it's going to play our over frames and use our tweens that we created. Now function btn out, same as the first function, event mouse event void, not returning any data, btn dot go to and play out. So that's going to play our out state, our rollout state. And last function we have to define is our function btn click. Event mouse event void. Now we're just going to say navigate to URL, and in brackets we're just going to type in YouTube, our variable name, semicolon, close brace to enter a script. Alright, so what these functions here mean, just means function btn over, which is the function we set up here in our event listener script. It's an event, mouse event, we have to type that in, or else there's going to be an error in our script. Void, because it's not returning any data. And we said btn dot, so we want action script to go inside of btn and play the over frames. So that would be when your cursor rolls over it, it's going to play our little tween that we created. Same thing for function btn out, just we're going to play the out frames. And btn click, we're just going to navigate to the URL YouTube. And we have the website stored in our variable up here, YouTube. So now let's test our movie and see how everything turned out. Now I'm going to get some warnings here just because I used the same instance name. Just ignore it, nothing's going to happen. So when we roll over the button, it's going to tween to our pinkish purple color. Roll away from it, it's going to back to aqua blue. And just one thing here, so I have to select this text and make this static text. There. And test our movie one last time. So over, out, and when we click on it, my browser opens and it takes me to youtube.ca right here. So our button's working perfectly. And the tween is kind of slow, so if you want, you can just change the frames from 12 frames to per second to 24 frames per second. So it'll look a lot better. 
So, yeah. So now you've created movie clip effects. So we're making our button act as, or making our movie clip act like a button. Added some pretty cool effects and learned how to navigate to a URL via action script. So thanks for watching this tutorial and look out for future tutorials by Pong Studios. Good luck with Flash.